what's going on people welcome back to the channel kg is back back with another video well it's a it's an important one it's an important one in terms of what Leeds united have got to do have got to do in order to not get out of a financial hole but in order to make sure that we don't have to strip this thing down completely oh my lord we'll get into that in just a moment before i do uh get into it please hit a like on the video subscribe to the channel and drop your thoughts and comments below uh thank you to philip hartley uh stephen short and william morrison for the super thanks on the last video uh two videos i should say much appreciated and also thank you to Basnaz, who's become a member of the channel please if you want if you want to help out the channel help me out please become a member the link is in the description and it just goes a long way to helping out your favorite creator i, I guess um let me just get into this good morning to everyone yeah it's morning right now man we're doing this one early today uh ali saying third to hit the like getting so much kg content it's like christmas yeah as i'm getting better as the voice is returning uh, you know to a bit more normality the content will come back as it was before i got sick so look out to see more of me obi-wan thanks victor or his legacy lives on there's just so much uh obi-wan there's you know then we get the the jka news but before i get into that <clears throat> let's just cover yesterday look so many people were convinced that ipswich were going to beat watford there's nothing there's no guarantees in football people you play the game in person not on paper and ipswich couldn't score that meant that uh us leicester and ipswich all didn't score you know all three that are, are vying to get promotion to the premier league everyone seems to be getting the heebie-jeebies right now so that's what i say people when 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 people are saying we've blown it for automatic when we we've got no chance of going up now it's playoffs only I don't buy that because there's still, you know, for us, four games to go, us and Ipswich Town, Leicester obviously have five, but this isn't over. It's just that I wish that we could be a bit more convincing, get some, get three points on the board and make it even more difficult. But right now we're all crawling over the finish line. So that's why I say, even if you think that we are just going to make the, the playoffs, it, it's not guaranteed because everyone had Ipswich winning. I saw the comments, saw the comments in my own videos saying Ipswich, no chance they're going to lose, no chance they're going to draw, they're going to win. Well, they didn't. Leicester didn't win. Neither did we. You know, so we're all just, who wants it the most? Who wants it the most? Um, yeah, Paul, we'll, we'll get into that in just a moment. Uh, yeah, Sam here saying, next opponent's Blackburn last 5-0 to Bristol City. We must win. I mean, it's, it's like the thing, though, Sam, isn't it? We saw Coventry get bopped by Southampton with some weak goals as well. That's what I say. I said it in yesterday. Oh, yeah. And if you haven't seen two, yesterday's videos, I did one talking about um, squad depth with Danny Farker and also a goodbye to Stuart Dallas. So if you haven't seen those, please go and check those out. But I said sometimes it's just about getting shots on goal, which is something that we haven't been doing lately because the goalkeepers in this league are average at best. Um, Daniel saying it's down to us to control our own fate, which means focusing on winning every game from now on. Playoffs will be more pressure than the running. One hundred percent, Daniel. The, the playoffs is definitely more pressure than this. One, it, it's not even close. This here, you've got a shot of going up automatically. The playoffs, it's you know that if you lose the games, you're back in this league no matter what. And I'm talking about the club because not all these players will be here next season if we're in the championship. I think that's, you know, I'm stating the obvious there, I hope. But it, it's much easier to go up this way. And I hope now everyone is taking the time out because we've got a pretty decent gap, haven't we? We played Monday or was it Tuesday? Whichever one, but we played Saturday. That's a nice gap. I hope that everyone is just resetting themselves. Danny Farker is looking over things and seeing what he could change. But again, I discussed that in yesterday's video, so I don't want to go into that here. But I'm just saying, people, the race for the top two is not over. Um, <clears throat> let me just, let, let's get into this then. Let's get into this. Where do we start? Let's let us let us go with this one first. Because this broke today, uh, and this is via The Athletic, Phil Hay. Um, but Leeds appeal against 24.5 million Jean-Kevin Augustine compensation withdrawn. Which means now that, well, let, let's let's talk about it. Um, yeah, the CAS, we'll, we'll call it CAS, Court of Arbitration for Sport. CAS, we'll call it that. Uh, CAS have confirmed to the Athletic that Leeds has bid to contest an order from FIFA that they pay an eight-figure sum to Augustine over his aborted transfer to Ellen Road in 2020 would not be ruled on by its judiciary. Judiciary, yeah. I hope I said that right. Uh <laughs> 
Leeds were liable for 24.5 million owed to Augustine after partially accepting a claim from the former PSG player that the English club were in breach of contract agreed with them with, with him. Um let me just see. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Despite pulling out that Leeds pulled out of a permanent deal claiming a delay to the season's finishing date caused the COVID uh, that 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 thing pandemic uh had seen their clause with Leipzig elapse, which was crazy. I said that at the time. You can't do that, man. Um, and listen, this, this, this is the bit that's going to get people. Um, Augustine, however, submitted a separate claim for compensation to FIFA. Documents published by the world governing body show that he negotiated a five-year contract with Leeds worth 93 grand a week, plus a total signing-on fee of 2.5 million. Hey, bro, were we signing Jonathan David or something? That, that shows you. I mean, listen, Victor Orta got a couple right. But that contract for this player is an abomination. Look, this is nothing on JK. By the way, I don't want to hear no JK slander. You get it how you get it. And if Leeds are stupid enough to pay you that or were due to pay you that much for being the player that you were, then that's on Leeds. How we negotiate. And that shows you. And that goes into the accounts for this 22-23. This, uh, but Lord have mercy. <sighs> wow. That's almost like a, it's, it's, it almost feels like football manager where you're just desperate to sign a player and they won't come to you. So you give them X, you know, inflated wages with a big old signing on fee to convince them. It's crazy stuff. Um, last year, FIFA found partially in his favor, awarding him 24.5 million. Lee's taken an appeal with Cass again, but the process had ended prematurely without further ruling. Uh, it is not clear whether the withdrawal of appeal has seen Leeds commit to paying Augustine the full amount awarded to him. Um, and Leeds have declined to comment whether they're facing the original bill of 24.5 million uh, and Augustine's agent hasn't responded to a request. So there you go, people. Augustine, yeah, he, he did. He absolutely hit the low. Um, God, uh, the thing is, I, I said it at the time, and 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 this is this is where people fall down with me. This is this is all on the club and and the owners at the time. You can't back out of agreements like that. You just can't. You've you've signed a contract. You you've achieved the goal that triggers that contract. You've got to go with it. Just because you don't fancy it anymore, you can't just back out. People that would be like it. Say a player did that to a club, where the the players agreed to everything. Then he says, you know what? Actually, you know what? I'm not coming here. I'm going elsewhere. What do you think the club's going to do to that player? You know, that player is probably not going to be able to play while the while the, the legal matter goes on. So Leeds were completely in the wrong here. And I don't know, as we all, we don't know how much they're going to have to pay to JKA, but at least now there's going to be a line in the sand. But what that does mean is that there's more money committed. Now, don't quote me on this. I think they have paid Leipzig. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. But it's JKA that is the one that's left now with the settlement uh, that's needed. Um, it is it is shocking. It is it's poor business, so poor, you know. And it's something that I mean, talking about now, we just don't need. But it's something that we we have to suffer. We have to. Um, Paul saying forty eight minutes he played. Do you reckon Bielsa ever wanted Augustine? Yeah, he did, because we listen we, again. Don't rewrite history. Anybody that was signed, it was due. It was through Marcelo Bielsa. He wanted him. But obviously, when he got here, there were fitness issues, there were other things, and maybe he couldn't get into that Bielsa shape. And we all know what that Bielsa shape is. And and because it it didn't work, maybe Bielsa soured on it. Maybe that was the reason. But that still doesn't mean you can go back on an agreement, a legally binding, by the way, agreement, and say, actually, now you know what? Go find another club where you're not going to be paid ninety three thousand a week, and you're not going to get a two point five million uh, signing on fee. You just can't do it, I'm afraid. Um, I think they probably, uh, Darren here saying, I think they probably settle with JK. Well, we'll see. That will probably be in, we'll probably see that in next year's accounts maybe. But yeah, we'll just have to see how that goes. But all that means is that there's less money to play with when it comes to transfers this summer in whatever league we're in. So, okay, right. Let's move off that. Because now we're going to talk, <laughs> David Sweetman. Doesn't matter now. We got Aronson. Ian Tilbury is asking who owns him now. That that's irrelevant, Ian. Um, I don't know which club he's at right now. I'm not. I'm not. With all due respect, I'm not really interested. But even even though I think he's been to about three clubs since he, he left Leeds, or two or three clubs, 
but that doesn't matter. He could have signed a 600,000 a week contract somewhere else. The fact is he's legally obligated. He's legally owed this kind of money or if he decides to settle for a little bit less. So it doesn't matter if he moved to Barcelona. Leeds United went back on the agreement. Yeah. Uh, ben here, could we have loaned him out if Bielsa didn't fancy him at the time? Yeah, I mean, there, there's so many things we could have done, uh, you know, th than this, you know what I mean? But they tried to use the, the worldwide situation at the time to get out of it, which was poor. You know, I, I know a couple of players, who was it? Who is it that did that? They didn't play after a certain date. Oh, what's that winger called? That small one. Scottish man. Used to play for Bournemouth, Newcastle. Ryan Frazier. I think he did something similar, didn't he? His his contract was ending end of June. I think the, the, the matches carried on in July. Something like that. It's, it's a long time ago, people. But either way, he said that he, he wasn't playing. And, and he had that up right because at the time, his contract said 30th of June. I, I don't know how that worked. But it, it was one of those things where the, the clubs were giving a lot more care to the players at the time and saying, look, if you don't feel comfortable playing because your contract's over, you don't have to play. I, I think that, that if I remember right, that's how it was working at the time. Listen, that, that period was so long ago, it feels like a different world. But yeah, we need to move on from that now. So let, let's go to the accounts. Now, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a numbers guy. I don't, you know, there's a lot of figures in these accounts that only accountants will know what the, the money means. So I'm going to give it to you very, very basically. Okay. And plus, I don't want to hurt anyone's head. Keep on talking about numbers because I know that would hurt my head. So I'm not going to do that to you. All right. But let's go through the, the, you know, briefly the 22, 23 accounts. So obviously revenue up, wages were up by 20%. Oh, my Lord. And you think about what we bought, by the way. And I'm going to get into that in another picture. This is via Kieran Maguire, by the way. So I guess if you've got any questions, any burning questions, please go to him. He's on Twitter. He's a big financial guy when it comes to uh, football, when it comes to football accounts. But boy, oh, boy, the manager payoff as well, 9.5 million. That's between Marsh and, and Javi Gracia. <sighs> Oh my lord. And you see, you see these kind of things though. At the time when when Unai Emery was available and it would have cost so much to get him. Well, you should have just got him, man. Should have just got him. But hey, Ali saying here makes you realize how hard it is to run a profitable club. I mean, it's it's probably only gonna be the tippy top clubs that are profitable, maybe like someone like Brighton as well, that's that buy low, spend high. Uh, no, yeah, buy low, sell high, I should say. Yeah, it, 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 is, it is tough. And you're looking at revenue here for Leeds United that is pretty high. Uh, and we still uh, submitted a loss of, I think it was 33.7 million in 22 23. Um, let me just see. Yeah, which was slightly down. Let me just see here. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, I can't find it. I can't find it. Yeah. Oh yeah. We, we lost 33, 36 million the year before in the, in the previous years. Okay. So let, let's go down. Let's go down. Uh, player purchases 170 million. Player says 86. So that's the Rafinha, Calvin Phillips, etc. But boy, what did we get for that 170? Hey, what did we get for that? This is, this is why I always say, I'm going to go, go into that point in the next one. Um, player sales, all that. Uh, gate receipts slightly up, but other revenue sources slightly down as lower Premier League prize money. But look at the merch sales, 24 million. That That's incredible. You know what I mean? That is a real good number. This is why I say we, we deserve more because we put so much into the club. 24 million from merch sales. That that That's like like near Big Ten stuff. You know, that that's, that's near top club kind of, kind of figures. Uh, obviously, the lower Premier League prize money was because we finished... Um, was it 19th? Yeah, 31 points, whatever it was. Uh, main cost of player related, despite relegation wages up an average of 67,000 a week for the first team. Managerial changes for Martian Grassi is 7 million. Player right now is 20 million amortization for up 40% to 81 million after a lot of expensive signings. <laughs> oh, man. 
190 million for the total losses. Um, Leeds spent 22 million cash more than the club generated from day-to-day -day running of the club. Net cash spent on players close to zero. A lot of loans and repayments, but overall brought in 8 million. Uh, and Popey here, which is the bit I want to get to, um, reading through LUFC, 190 million for transfer fees, of which 73 million is due within a year. Club are owed 1.2 in transfer fees. <laughs> Credit card has been out. The value of promotion cannot be understated. And what I want to go into next is this. Um, look, look at look at this, people. And this is why I say you, you do not need to spend 20 plus million on each player. It's about what you buy. It's about the, the scouting. It's about finding gems that are not so expensive. But look, look, look at what we were relegated with, which just shows you money spent does not equal position finished. We had the 11th highest wage bill in the Premier League. How? Who? Who's getting that money? I don't pocket watch, but man, who's getting that money? Fourth highest player purchases, 10th most expensive squad in the Premier League, and we finished 19th. Incredible. Uh, I don't know if, I, if you can see that properly. Let me just see. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Um, Man City, Liverpool, Chelsea, Man United, Spurs, Arsenal, Leicester, Villa, Newcastle, Everton, and Leeds. But yet, in this period, West Ham win a European trophy, you spend less. West Ham, uh, Brighton, oh my days. You know what? It, it's a shambles, basically. It, it's a shambles. And Ali here, and this is the point we need to get to. Um, let me just close that one. Get the main one back. Because I feel like you need to see this. If we don't go at that 73 million is crippling. And, and this is where we need to go to. Obviously, we have players that are out on loan that we hope that we can turn into transfer fees. But, and if we don't go at the season, you are probably looking at sales of two or three key players from this team. And, you know, we're, take your pick of what, 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 what mix you want. Our most sellable assets, quite frankly, are Nanto, Somerville, Jorginho, and the one that will probably hurt the most, well, not hurt the most, but the one that is probably more obvious because he's homegrown is Archie Gray because he's through the academy. It would be pure profit, pure profit on Archie Gray. And if you've got to believe if somebody comes in in the summer with an absolutely unbelievable offer, then a couple of these players are going. And with the money that we've got to pay out, you don't know what we're going to get back in people. That is why it is so important that we need to get promoted this season. And I just want to go back. Yeah, Crypto Steve, we spent a, a fortune on relatively unknown or tested players. Yeah, bad negotiations, people. It, almost criminal. It is criminal, Darren. It is. Um, but, but what I was saying is, I remember at the start of the season that People, and I don't know whether it was a copium because we got relegated, but people were convinced that this could be a two-year project. And I was saying from day one, there is no chance that this club can spend two years in the championship. There's no chance because the, the finances, the incentives for the 49ers and everything else, the money that comes in is too rich in the Premier League to want to stay in here or could be able to cope to stay in here for two years. But some of you were convinced that this was a two-year project and that it was about stability and then try it the second year. And I said, no chance. And these figures confirm everything that I thought in the first place, probably worse than what I thought. I didn't think it was going to be this bad. Now, listen, for PSR, uh, uh, let me just clarify, for PSR, Kieran Maguire and by all means, Leeds United have said we are compliant. So there's no risk of any deductions or anything. We're not in a Leicester kind of boat yet. If anything comes out, we'll deal with it then. But as of today, as I speak to you today, um, we are good for, for profit and sustainability. No issues there. But as Kieran Maguire said um, in, in a reply to somebody, the, P, the PSR is fine, but the cash flow is sticky. Now, he, he may not have said sticky, but I'm saying it's sticky. All right? And listen, if we, you know, we do not go up, people. 
it, it's going to be it's going to be a mad summer but i don't want to think about that right now while we've got automatics in sight what no matter what you guys think automatic promotion is still within our grasp but we need that or we need it more than than you can believe more than you can believe more than you can believe um let me just let me just go up here because this is a great point by somebody um Ali here saying, can see why the 777 investment group are hesitant to, hesitant to invest until they know Everton are staying up. Yeah, and it could be another thing, Ali, like what 49ers did with us. You know, they, they didn't outright buy us in the summer. We got relegated, so they had to renegotiate the price. Could be one of those where even if Everton get relegated, 777 will still take them over, but a much reduced rate. Remember, I think we was going to be bought for something like 400 million. Could be wrong there, but don't quote me on that. But in the end, it was way less than that because we got relegated to the championship um no gavin uh let me just say this as well gavin asking the question do these figures include sinny at 20 million no they do not include the sinistera sale they do not include the tyler adams sale so those will go towards this year's accounts which is good but that still doesn't account for um a lot of money that we do need to pay out in transfer fees and installments to players some of them that are not at this football club right now people some of them that are just not here right now. So, yeah, it, it, it's it's absolutely mad. Oh, Nigel, this is putting me off my dinner. Come on, Lee. Hold on a minute. Oh. Oh, man. Sorry, Nigel, you just made me cough there, man. Um, Ali here saying, didn't we get a nice amount for Gorman too? Yeah, I think it was about six or seven mil. I think it was that. But you you also have to take into account people that the parachute, let, let's just say we stay in the championship, the parachute payments reduced this year. Um, and I'm going to show you an example of that in just a moment. So everything gets reduced, and but the cost don't. The cost don't. The wages will still go up. Players will still have yearly increments of, in their wages. So that is what I'm saying. We cannot stay in this league. That that It's so important. So I hope the reality hits people. I know a lot of people don't like the side of football. They like to think that football is just a, a passion game. But I'm afraid it is a business, people. It is. And that's probably why you see in Leicester, Ipswich and us all just like getting a little bit nervy towards this end of the season because there's just so much at stake for everybody. You know, but for us, Leicester... I mean, Leicester are in trouble either way, whether they're in the championship or prem. But in order for us to keep our key assets and hopefully move forward a little bit and then just focus on getting rid of those players that are out on loan, we need this promotion, people. Uh, everyone's feeling Nigel. <laughs> KG ruined appetites today. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. Uh, Michael here saying lead Saul Rodrigo for 3 million to the Saudi club. Yeah, or approximately 3 million. Yeah, so, so th there have been a few sales. But when you're talking about owing 73 this year, that's only this year, people. There'll be more to be owed, you know, in, in next season too. You know, these these transfer fees are paid over time. You know, think of Klarna, yeah, but yearly Klarna, all right? And and we've done that. You know, there was a lot of, you saw there was a lot of signings. How many times did we see a signing saying it's so much plus add-ons? Well, this is this is it. Um, Mill and Chip, will the reality hit the players in the next four games? Listen, the play. I guess I, I think the people it affects less is probably the players because I think a few of these players know anyway, regardless of, of where Leeds United are, they're going to have so much interest. And this is another point that I have to make. I know I made it before, but it's, it's, it's never been more important now. But a lot of these players know that there's clubs watching them. There's so many top clubs watching our key players. So many, always been the case at Leeds United. We know this, League One, Premier League teams coming for Jermaine Beckford, even though we, we wish that we could keep him for the champ. Bradley Johnson, Johnny Howson, any player that's got any talent at Leeds United gets picked off. We we don't get to keep our key players like other play, other teams do in the championship, where they get to keep them three, four, five years, because we're always being watched. Never mind on TV, there's always scouts at Ellen Road. We're always, we've always been that club where if, if we're not in the Prem, we're susceptible to a team from a, a, a league above getting our key players. Always been the case. And that won't be any different this season, especially people knowing these kind of figures. Um, Gavin saying, we'll be okay when we get 50 million for Furpo. <laughs> Tremendous. 
Um, Matt here saying we need this promotion to keep hold of our top players. If we don't go up, uh, say goodbye to Somerville, Nanto, Georgie, etc. Yeah, and and you know what? You just think about that as well. How it, it would be gutting to lose one of those players, but imagine losing two or three, and and you don't even know what's coming back in. And I've made the joke before about Somerville being sold, and then we get Matt Ritchie in, or something like that. That's when you know you're in the championship. That's when you know you're doomed and you just become another championship club. Right now, we have an advantage. We've seen our bench. It's better than a lot of things in the championship. It's one of the best. But when you stay, the longer you stay down here, the more it gets stripped down. Uh, shout out to you, Ryan. Uh, UK saying great content, KG. I try. I try. Listen, I know numbers aren't for everyone. They're not for me, but I've given it to you as, as basic as possible. I guess if you want any intricate details, like I say, Go to Kieran Maguire, and I'm sure he'll answer your question. He seems to be pretty active on um, on Twitter. Um, Michael here saying, Farker, this will make him even more erratic, nervy, not needed this morning. Hey, listen, I, I'm only delivering what they've submitted. You know, these are public accounts. You can go to company's house and look at them yourself if you want to scrutinize them in detail. Yeah, Paul, this is it. Back to the good old days of Michael Brown and Michael Tong. If we don't go up, good times there, yeah. And that's when I had season tickets, Paul. Boy, oh boy, you know, and we was talking about, remember those arguments we used to have? That That's when I stopped arguing with people because um, it was like, am I really arguing who needs to par partner Rudy Austin out of Michael Brown, Michael Tong, Paul Green, and all these guys? Am I really doing that? No, I'm not doing that no more, man. This is poor. <laughs> I had enough. I had enough. Um, but I just want to show you something as well in comparison and and it's not a like for like comparison, people. So I'm not saying that our money goes down to to this or or anything like that. But I just want to show you as well. Kieran Maguire submitted West Brom's accounts, who of course are still getting well. They're getting parachute payments, but they've been down a couple of years. But just look at the difference. Premier League Championship are close, but in terms of money, it's not it's not close. The revenue for West Brom, again, I know that we'll probably generate more, basically just due to merch sales. But I just want to show you the difference in terms of revenue uh, gained. West Brom submit their accounts, um, 46 million wages. Ooh, uh, player purchases, 300,000. Boy, oh boy. And, and here, this is it as well. Revenue down due to lower parachute payments, which ended. So theirs has ended now. So that, that's them done. They're, they're, they're done now. No more parachute payments for them uh, as, of, as of this season onwards. West Brom will only get about $8 million this season from TV money in EFL. So revenue likely to be about 22 to $24 million. You, You'd never believe that this is the same country and that's just the league, of, uh, league down from the Premier League. It's insane. Absolutely insane. But that, you know, that, is why, that is why it is important to get back to the Premier League. Um, let's have a look. Les here saying, if we don't go up, it ain't happening next season. We'll only have mediocre players left. Left. Same with signings. Yeah, I don't. I don't even want to think about it, Les. And I'll be honest with you, people. Until we have to cross that bridge, I'm not going to think about it. I'm going to stay with on the mindset that I've got in that we are getting promoted this season. If it doesn't happen, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So forgive me if I'm not thinking about championship signings next season. I'm thinking about the next four games for us to get into that top two. Um, yeah, Gavin, I, I think that would be the case as well, Gavin. I guess the players will be told by Kinnear, et cetera, how important promotion is now. We are all in it together, et cetera. Yeah, there, there will be rallying cries behind the scenes. Of course there will. Um, they'll, they'll know the, the weight of it. They'll know the, the magnitude of what it means. Listen, it, it benefits the players too. All their all their money gets at least doubled, all the players. So there's incentives for them to go up. You know, there could be promotion bonuses in the new players' contracts as well. So look, there's benefits all around, but I'm talking about as a club. Yeah, we need this, people. We absolutely need it. So I think I have covered everything here. I think I have. Um, yeah, John, Kevin, blah, 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 championship. Yeah, I've covered everything, people. So, look, if there's anything that you want to leave in the comments, uh, 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 any thoughts on today's show, then, yeah, put it in the comments below. But that is the, a quick, brief overview of the accounts, the JKA stuff. Guys, the next video I should be back for is a preview for the Blackburn game. So, until then, 
I'll see you in the next one. Please like the video before you go. It really does help the channel out. Drop your comments below. Super chats. Uh, super thanks. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Peace out, people. See you in the next one.